Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Jimmy Scott Fitness Podcast Radio Show. Coming to you on this Thursday, July the 16th, 2020. Hopefully, it finds you guys staying safe and staying sweaty all at the same time. We are talking the stress web today, but before we jump into the podcast, this episode is brought to you by my homies at. Athletic Greens, the one thing I take every single day and never miss a day. If you guys struggle to get your veggies in or all of your micronutrients, or if you just want to keep your immune system running on high 24-7, 365, I would suggest jumping on board. And if you guys want to check out 20 free travel packs, feel free to hit me up. Again, it's the one thing that ensures I'm at least covering my nutritional bases every single day. And if you're really on the fence, we will actually shoot you a sample right to your front door. You can try it and then jump into the 20 free trial from there. I wouldn't talk about it so much if I didn't love it. And again, does it taste like a milkshake? No, it doesn't, but it's the most badass tasting greens on the planet. So hit me up. I can shoot you guys the link directly. Athleticgreens.com slash Jeremy Scott is where it is at. So with that said, as we jump into the stress web, I have my wife, Heather Scott here on the podcast for you guys as well. So Heather, welcome back. Hi. Hello, everyone. How are you? <laughs> I'm back. How are you? I'm good. It's different having this filmed right now. Oh, yeah. Staring Heather, at myself. If you guys don't know, Heather <laughs> usually doesn't do uh, all the YouTube video podcasts. Yeah, I don't really like having the camera on me. It's just I'm trying to get out of my comfort zone with having the camera, but right now I'm staring at myself as I'm talking and it's tripping me out. <laughs> yeah, I'm used to it. So if uh, I can do a little bit on the phone here and there, but it's still really hard for me to get used to it. So, <laughs> so everybody on YouTube, welcome. Thank you guys for watching. And if you guys are not subscribed to the YouTube page, get up on there. It's like 1,300 videos, and I think we have about 100 loading this week alone. Um, a lot of stuff we have kind of backlogged, but that is where it's at. But this is a play off of a post that uh, the people over at Precision Nutrition did, I believe. Uh, I think it came from Krista Scott Dixon, actually. But they're just talking about stress, obviously, in all the factors of stress, or all, I guess, the the kind of levels like it's called stress web but as i look at it kind of like a diagram it looks like a stress wheel to me uh, of all the areas of mm -hmm. life that we stress about and from my understanding which is primitive uh, at best is that you know kind of you know all stress matters i think even sometimes you know you're having a shitty day things aren't rolling the way you want to and you go in and you crush a workout and that's super taxing and that, that beats you down even further now that's also stress on the body you know sometimes it can be you stress but I think sometimes we have a tendency to kind of pile it on ourselves even when we don't need to. So we're gonna run over all the areas of stress here. I believe there's, there's eight, eight, yeah. if I can count correctly. And then kind of the, the simple Cause ways. Cause and effect, right? Yeah, and just what they are, you know, and mm -hmm. most of you guys are aware of these. Some of them, you know, maybe subconsciously you are. And then we'll go over kind of ways that you can relieve the stress and then the things that you know, work for us and the things that we tend to do individually and then as a team here to not be a complete giant stress ball because the world is kind of full of stress at the moment. Well, as I'm looking at it, I'm like, during, given our current situation in our country and the world on so many levels, basically every single section of that wheel that will touch is what we're facing right now and causing, like you said, a giant stress ball or web. It just doesn't make for you all feel of good. Us. Yeah. <laughs> In some capacity. So unless you're like superhuman and you just can like somehow never feel stress, which that would be amazing. <laughs> but you're like basically a robot at that yeah. point. You're a, a mutant serial killer. I think any honestly, even you know, the mentally toughest humans still deal with it. Like the guys who I'd consider, you know, like if you're a Navy SEAL, right? Or you like went through, you went through BUDS or you went through Ranger School. Like they, the goal is to break those dudes down and, and to see who can actually make it through. So if they don't mentally quit, that they can, those are the dudes in your foxhole. And even those guys, I mean, there's only so much your your brain can take at one time. Like we, we only have so much capacity, I guess, for all of this at once. And when it all, comes raining down at one time, it's tough to kind of navigate. So hopefully this podcast can help you guys if you're dealing with some shit right now, which I think we probably all are to varying degrees. And then obviously it lives in your head. So you can 
make yourself super stressed even if nothing changes just by something you read or watch or see or somebody you talk to so uh which one do you want to go through first you can start with where's my psycho. Number where's my number one psycho spiritual so the first one on the list here and again there's eight total we're talking psycho spiritual the people where it's like and again this is probably the worst one i would imagine of them all where you feel like a lack of meaning in your life you have this deep despair and almost that feeling of like hopelessness like they're i guess that would basically be your rock bottom if yeah I'm not very mistaken. depressed state of being so if you're at that you know stage definitely try to seek a professor professional for help in some capacity a doctor a therapist that's the real stuff yeah like i would imagine like death loss of a child, mm -hmm. things like that. Some, some sort of trauma that happened to you, you know, kind of that world is ending or there's no other options type of feeling where, I mean, we have to take that seriously, especially in our country, suicidal thoughts, things like that. So definitely if you're feeling, reach out to somebody or, you know, just go get professional help. But. Yeah, that's not one you can do solo. Mm -hmm. That's not a, I'm going to, you know, rub some dirt on it and fix it. That's yeah. not what that problem is. So the next on the list will go environmental stress, which, again, for most of us, you know, from small to big, right? Like whether it's, you know, noise, air pollution, crowding, and then obviously, you know, crime, maybe feeling unsafe, like in your neighborhood or something. Uh, and again, th that goes by all of us. It's kind of like your personality type, right? The people who, you know, introvert, extrovert, you get jacked up by going to a concert. Or like for me, it's like I can only do it for so long before it just drains me of my life energy. For sure. Well, and I think, I mean, you they mentioned crowding to, did you say noise? Yeah. Yeah. I think I took it as given the current situation that we're in, so... With the crisis of COVID happening, um, obviously you're getting a lot of noise around that. Whether it's the oh, political, the, no, the, news the political environment, the you know news media channels that you're paying attention to, um, the crime with you know the whole issue with racism in our country, human trafficking, large gatherings of people spreading the virus you know there's so many different things happening right now that's affecting all of us and we're we're it's like an emotional roller coaster you're getting so frustrated angry scared and so it's adding all this stress on these topics so again if you can try to limit the media content you consume or really be selective on what sources and what are credible and not credible and educate yourself with different, you know, inspiring people and books and articles and podcasts like to help you understand certain things and also to just help you cope with everything going on. At least that's what's been working for me. So I think it's very important and also for us, especially our generation, vote. <laughs> because a lot of these issues like air pollution, for example, let's just take a light one. It's not a light one, but in uh, the sustainability efforts, not just in our country, but globally, the global warming issue. Um, I even think about it with health, just with the pollution in the air, it can affect your hormones. And so that can cause stress on the body, things like that. Yeah, funding of the police, all the things where mm -hmm. you can vote locally. I always say it all the time, like do your own neighborhood first, and then obviously it extends out from there. Sometimes we get so worried about things that are so far from us yet we fail to realize like okay yeah with our city council with our mayor with our governor and i think now more than ever you probably see you're aware uh, of everything going on the power of your, of your local government mm -hmm. and your state government which you, you probably again if you're like me you probably weren't as in tune to it before but now you realize like these guys are making decisions that uh, alter the course of what you can and can't do on a daily, your daily life mm -hmm. especially in the, the home that you live in the, the area the neighborhood. You might live in a place where they had Chaz, bro. <laughs> if you don't want Chaz, you got to go vote. You're just saying that because I'm from Washington. I mean, but can you vote? <laughs> and that, I though? still have friends that live in downtown Seattle, and we were talking about it. Can you imagine that, though? That's crazy. Yeah, it's craziness right now. That doesn't. Which ties into the next one, uh, the social. 
uh, social stress, which I think we all feel this to some extent, especially now. Uh, and for the people who are in a less than ideal situation, you know, at home, whether it be abusive relationships, um, if you are working, you know, co-worker conflicts, work conflicts, it, disputes with neighbors who are, you know, crazy loud or just you know, maybe not your cup of tea. Um, obviously, the isolation part of it right now is huge. And those of you who have lost a job, maybe with rejection, not getting a job you want or something that's less than ideal. And obviously, marriage problems. I think, mean, you know, we got a guy here, uh, his girlfriend is a divorce attorney. And she's like, she's been busier now uh, more than ever. And just because there's so Which many so people. so sad. You know, but it's the reality of the situation. It may be stress on the marriage, and, and you're you're forced to be together twenty four seven, at least for the beginning of this whole situation. Which sometimes is good. I think you know you learn a lot and about each other, bit. and you either make it through it or you don't, or you choose not to even try. Which that can be one person, but it takes two. So. When I think this compounds a lot of things too, or brings it to the forefront, like this is just a strange season for everybody, like where maybe your relationship or your marriage or something was not ideal, and now you're stuck concerned where well, one person lost their job, or maybe they both did. And again, it's different for us, like we don't have, you know, three kids running around and all these other. Which would create more stress. I couldn't even imagine, like, like I say it to people, like, I don't. We feel for you guys, because we have people, a lot of friends that do, yeah. and family that has kids, and. It just adds a layer yeah, of Yeah, I wish I, you know, could help more. <laughs> well, so I offer sometimes. <laughs> babysit for short term. And, and like, if you need to come over and bring, and bring the kids, like, you can. But that is a real stress. And that's around all the time. But I think even compounded more now just because of everything else that is obviously spiraling around it. Which goes to the next topic, which is a physical stress for a lot of people. Now, I think this is one that is always an issue specifically in america and even more so it's to the forefront and i think we've skipped a a great opportunity to talk about it and when i mean physical stress like overtraining for you people who are crazy which i, I do think there's very few people who do overtrain there are those uh freak anomalies out there i think that you under arrest and you under you malnourish yourself basically but overtraining is real nutrition deficiencies vitamin deficiencies is a huge one uh, food allergy intolerances, extreme dieting, dehydration, um, the lack of sleep, all of those things are in physical stress. And I think now more than ever, you know, whether it's this virus or the, or the next one that comes, it just, it pulls mm -hmm. the blanket off of like, wow, we're not that healthy, you know, as a whole, especially now when you look at the people who tend to struggle with everything that comes across, like with obesity and diabetes and heart disease, like those things are real. Mm -hmm. And those are for most people, largely preventable if you just do the right things right. over time. Mm -hmm. It's very sad, but it is bringing a lot of crucial, it's a health crisis and it's showing kind of our true colors of how we've been living our life in America. Well, it connects to the financial too, and, and I'll touch on that one at the very end, but it's like, you know, it showed like, okay, most of us don't have money you know, to go a couple of weeks without making money. So, it, you know, we've been leveraging things to the brim a lot of times, like, you know, leveraging debt on top of debt on top of debt to make things work. And then the same thing with our health. It's like, wow, you weren't that healthy. And if one thing comes your way, your immune system isn't, you know, healthy enough to fight things off. And I think that's been happening for, you know, a long period of time. People just not taking it seriously enough. We're just taking it for granted, I guess, mm -hmm. is the way I look at it. And then, you know, just salute some solutions with that. Just regular exercise, obviously, can help lower stress levels and anxiety, which is huge right now, too. I know I experience stress and anxiety really easily. Um, so exercise for me is so important every day. Just releasing those endorphins and just improving my sleep quality, like we always talk about. But if, imagine and, if you didn't exercise, how bad you'd feel. Oh my gosh, I'd be so depressed. Because it does, I mean, research shows it helps with your self-image, your self-esteem, which in turn makes you feel happier, more confident, and um, less stressed, and 
depressed. And it doesn't have to be like, you don't have to kill yourself. No, it could be yoga, walking, walking. just walking every day. Walking, yeah. running, and See, obviously group training, which we're not open again. So um, if you're doing that at home. Lunge, around, around, lunge around your neighborhood. Yeah. Do burpees in your garage. But even, I mean, going back to exercise, I, I've struggled sometimes with over-exhausting myself because I do really love the high I get from exercise, but sometimes I'll overdo it like I run and then I'll I'll do more of a workout than I should have and that can lead to like adrenal fatigue which puts stress on the body or dehydrated your hormones can be out of whack so things like that that you should also be aware of and just try to find that happy medium depending on how you feel that day um, again fueling your body with nutrients dense foods real food but then when you do want to treat yourself really focus on moderation and and um trying to be as consistent during as majority of the time um but not obviously giving up everything to do that and um i know they mentioned on their like food allergy imbalances testing so that's always good do your blood work see if you have some hormones out of whack i know i had my thyroid pretty low um last year so i I've made sure to really supplement and eat the right foods and and focus on that. In the past, we've had food allergy testing, which is really good to know if you have... Spectrocell, Alcott test. Yeah, to see either what micronutrients maybe you're lacking. Like I know I was low in magnesium, so I make sure I have magnesium every single day. Um, also, we're gluten sensitive, dairy sensitive, and we found that out years ago. But even like taking it a step further, what could also cause stress is like, I remember back in the day going on a work trip or going to a conference event type situation and I would get so stressed out because I'm like, oh my gosh, they're not gonna have enough like gluten-free foods or non-dairy options and like just health food in general, a variety. And uh, that would stress me out just being in that work environment because I'm like thinking about it, but I should be paying attention to what's happening, you know, for my job that day but I know if I eat certain a certain way I feel very sick I get very you know much like the digestive issues and so now I mean the hotel industry restaurants have gotten way better about providing more options for everybody with sensitivities or allergies throughout the year so that's something um, you can easily solve by getting tested and kind of doing process of elimination with your diet yeah, I mean, you should just audit how you feel every day. It's the most basic thing we don't do as humans. Most people never just eat for a week and then jot down, like, I feel great. I feel like crap. I have energy. I feel lethargic. I'm bloated. And, like, audit how you go to the bathroom. As crazy as that sounds, like, did you go to the bathroom once or twice or three times? Was it solid? Was it, you know, mushy diarrhea? Like, whatever your thing is, like, you, we need to be doing that. So if you're eating something and all of a sudden you have this reaction where it's like, your nose is running or you have this huge mucus production or like you know you shit your pants like just <laughs> understanding like wow when i eat two pizzas maybe that's not the best thing i should do or when i drink this much wine i have a headache and i feel or like drink too much caffeine which sometimes like today i've had way too much already can so, lead to dehydration feeling 100%. <laughs> so it's like you're just aware and anxiety that's why again i'm a fan of you know whether it is you know food tracking just to see or just having a basic diary of like wow when I go to sleep at this time and wake up at this time, I feel great. When I do this, I feel like crap. And then you live your life based on how you feel. Yet most of us don't do that. And that's physically wearing us down, making us unhealthier. And it's very counterproductive to what you're trying to do, especially if you are a person who spends time, you know, training and trying to look and, and move a certain way. You'd want to feel a certain way as well. Yeah. So I think the point is just slow down, kind of reevaluate, take a look. At yourself and your habits and see what you can and, and pay attention to how you feel and see what you can change and because your fitness learn about should be giving yourself. to your life and the way that you eat should be giving to your life not taking away from it and a lot of times the diehard fitness people we say your fitness steals your fitness or it's actually you're so tired and you're so run down you can't go do other things and then the other people who don't do anything and they're sedentary like it's taking away from them what they're eating is actually making them sick and mm -hmm. when you guys eat things Everything you eat is basic. It's either making you healthier or unhealthier. That's it. And I'm not saying you have to be perfect because you should. Go have beers and crush pizza with your homies. That's fine. I go, but you can't do that five days a week. Or fill yourself with all the processed chemical 
foods because you're going to end up with some sort of health issues and all the sugar like that's a whole nother crisis in our country so the <laughs> this amount of sugar intake the, the chronic stuff you do like habitually those terrible habits are going to add up so again pick your spots but just understand when you eat things it either makes you healthier or unhealthier and you have to know that every time you're putting food into your mouth and then see how you feel you know retroactively and then kind of go from there do you want to go back to social as far as like tips to help with cope with those stressors or are we going to go Let's into do, the next topic we'll do all the help at the end okay, okay. so mental uh the mental stress which i think for a lot of us this is a huge one for this season of life me in particular as well the mental fog your lack for of sure. focus forgetfulness uh indecisiveness yeah i will say I'm not really indecisive. You're, you're a great decision maker. I tend to like sometimes be on the fence or I have to really research or think about it a little bit longer to make my decision. But I would say the mental stress, like, or the, in terms of mental stress, if you want to talk about forgetfulness, or no, I guess this would be lack of focus. I, went, I don't know what day it was, like when they locked down everything. It was like probably in the middle of it. And my brain is just thinking about like, oh, you know, the, the 19 things that go into like running a business and being responsible for humans and all the things that I just think about. And uh, I was like driving here one day and it was like right by, on Scottsdale Road by Pomo. And it's like, there's a stoplight red. I just drove right through. Oh yeah. Like I didn't even put my brakes on anything. And then I like look back and I'm like, well, everybody else stopped. And I, bla like, I blasted through like 50. That's so like dangerous, first of all. I was talking to a coworker of mine because um, we're still on furlough. And there's going to be probably... Well, we know for sure there's going to be some job um, losses and restructuring of our team. And we're going to find out here soon in the next couple months. But we were just saying, like, it's like this brain fog that we're in. Like, we keep talking about how we feel like we're in a dream. And she was like, yeah, I keep thinking, like, it's a dream. And I'm going to, like, wake up and things are going to go back to normal. But it's just, like, we're all feeling it on It's like a level. shitty dream. Like Groundhog Day. Yeah. Not ideal. But yeah, I said, everybody feels that way though. Like you just kind of wake up like, when is it going to change? And like, I don't know. I don't have the answer yeah. for that. But you just have to make the best of mm -hmm. it yeah. each day. But yeah, I definitely don't. Again, I've said this before on the podcast. Like it, it's okay to not feel normal during this because I don't think anything is normal at all. No. But it is real for sure. And the mental stress of it, I think, is worse than almost anything because it's the... You, won't, you can read something or see something or look at something and it, you psych yourself out and you make it like, well, it will never be this and I'll never, that's not true either. So you can't play that game though. And I think sometimes worrying, and I said before, worrying about a problem is oh, often yeah. much worse and than I the, struggle with that the for problem sure. itself. <laughs> because we do this though, we, we do this as humans, we play every worst case scenario you just gotta let it 10 go. miles down the road and we never do the best case scenario. Like I never pull up to my house and I'm like, you know what? Maybe Ed McMahon's going to come and I'm going to win $10 million today. Like, I never think that. It's always like, what shitty thing is going to happen? And I don't know why we do that as humans naturally, but we tend to do that. When we look, and again, that's why I say don't watch the news, you guys. Because it, I don't think anything positive is going to be on there. I really don't. Like, in, prove me wrong. Send me some really positive news you guys find in the next 10 days. But as far as I know, every time you log on and you check it, it's just mm -hmm. the same horse shit. So... That won't help your mental stress as well. Good. And you can filter like on the news apps, just certain um, articles and different organizations and, you know, corporations or LinkedIn even who you actually want to follow and who you don't want and to block follow. block the others. Yeah. Snooze so, them 30 days. Next one. Who do you follow for the news? What do you read? What? What do you read for the news? I mean. I don't gosh, watch anything. I mean, I have so many on my LinkedIn that I like follow. Like people? No, like everything from New York Times to Wall Street Journal to CNN Business to... Um, See, I don't look at any of that. I have Apple News. But I've had to kind of go through and filter some of it because it's just too much at one time and I get really overwhelmed. Or I get sucked in and then it can just quickly just change my mood that day. Take so. you down the rabbit hole. Don't do that, everybody. Yeah. Next one. Cultural stress. This is not speaking the country's language, not knowing the country's customs, not fitting in at work. You know, that would be, a, I've said this a million times, somebody who comes somewhere and like to America, right? And English is not your first language and you can come here and like go to the college or like work somewhere. 
it mad blows props my mind. It blows my mind. I'm like, I, I, I even remember um, my two friends from Vietnam that I met in college, and I remember they came from Vietnam to go to my college in Washington State. Go Cougs! And I'm like, how? It was like I can't believe I thought leaving my home six hours away was a big deal to go to college and they're clear across the country the world and you know it's not even their first language and i'm just like wow i was so impressed and it just was so great being able to learn from others um it, it's just so important and i think going back to on the flip side, us Americans going to other countries, oh, and here we are. We're the worst. Majority of us don't only know English, which is really sad. And I know on our trips internationally, we would get flustered at certain points. You know, if you didn't have someone that spoke English and you're trying to get somewhere, we're lost or frustrated on where we're going. And, and it's like, that can put you in a state of stress. So I'm like, I can, and I'm like, I sound like a, such a brat because I'm like it it could be so much worse and you could be someone trying to make a new life for themselves or get an education in our country and it would be a hundred times harder and more stressful I could and do I'm it. like oh because I'm on vacation and I can't figure out what restaurant I need to go to <laughs> I, I barely passed college here as it is and I'm from here like yeah I remember being in Barcelona trying to order cough syrup and like the one like pharmacist tech like didn't understand so I'm doing like hand signals of like coughing like for sleep medicine and stuff and then the one time we we're in Italy we're standing we're on the Malfi coast staying on the side of the road and the bus driver rips my bus tickets <laughs> yeah. and then there's no space in the bus so I can't even get on so now I'm standing on the side of the road and they're telling me to get off the bus or not come on the bus yeah so I have these worthless bus tickets and I'm trying to find like the I don't know if she's like a, the bus coordinator lady and I'm trying to explain to her in my in my English and like thank God like she knows some English and can like get us on the bus otherwise we're like 20 miles from like the hotel and I'm like God I'm such a loser like an idiot American. We're like trying to look up our Rick oh. Steve's book oh, God. which has you know some of the thank you Rick Italian language on there translation. <laughs> That's bad man like we're just but most people in Italy speak English yes. which is great. Which, again which... like to their credit. Yeah. Like, we're the worst. So, again, I, if you are somebody who, you know, culturally struggles with that, I feel for you, man. Because I could not even imagine, like, yeah. even on my fake vacation life, it's tough. And also, it makes me think about even just working for a corporation that might not be diverse yet, which would be really sad. But I know, you know, we've made huge strides with companies um, becoming more diverse but i think there's still companies out there that aren't and how horrible if you're working for a company and you just yeah like you feel completely you just don't fit in to their company culture so i know that's um been great to see with the with the whole movement with black lives matter and even more brands representing everybody in different races and now more than ever it's like i think we're finally taking more action that was postponed for far too long for sure but uh and also on the women's i have to m mention this just equality i think you know i've even experienced feeling like okay yeah there's a lot of women in lower level mid-level or even vp level positions but gosh like the c level especially for major corporations there's not a lot of females in c-level positions and i we still have a long way to go in in that whole category of um feeling like you you fit in that you relate to um, the people that you're working for that are at the top that are running these companies so and that's changing too sure. with like the amount of women entrepreneurs and in the small startup space i think but it's still kind of lagging with the large fortune 500 companies slowly but true yeah uh next one emotional stress which again to me the mental and that are connected if you're talking resentment your anger your anxiety during all of this for sure uh depression grief obviously if, you know for the loss of things but yeah, I do think the anxiety and the depression during this is real for a lot of people. And I've heard that from 
a bigger number of people in the last four months than I've probably heard in the last five years from people, which is insane. But again, I've also never seen anything like this at scale either. I agree. I feel like one day I'd feel normal and then the next day I'm like a hot mess. And then. But you like it mad though. Like, oh, you know, something like it goes from like. I get so angry and frustrated and you just feel like you just, you're the lack of having no control, just that's what sets me off. And it's almost like you just have to kind of endure parts of it, but you just can't live in a state of you can't be dwelling on it constantly and i finally have moved i think into the path where i'm now it's like i just accept this is what it is right now and let's make the best of what we can make out of the day and just kind of take it small break it up in small doses and chunks and try to look at it that way because you can't look <laughs> even a month out i feel like <laughs> no it's, it's one day at a time really and you can't live in fear either though like that to me is not even living. It's like you're in this yeah. paralyzed state of like. Then it's just you're wasting your lifetime. And you can still make a lot so out of these days. It, it might not be exactly what you want. And trust me, I've had a. Or it might be more inconvenient because you have to wear a mask. But like, just do the things in the smart, responsible way and follow the rules so we can get through this. Yeah, the sooner the better would mm -hmm. be great. But even when I talk with, you know, like a Bryce or somebody, like we got a high school kid and, he, you know, him, his whole days are, and I, I didn't even think about it, like I feel bad. It's like his whole day is like, you know, YouTube video games and go to the pool and like clearly can't see friends and can't do things. I'm like, I don't know what sucks worse. Yeah. Being a high school kid right now or being an adult right now. Uh, and either way, it's it's not fun but you can't live in a state of being pissed off you know and have anxiety every single day playing the what if game always worst case scenario because that's not good for anything and there is you know i do think things from this stressful season that you can take Absolutely. out of it in a positive light like i, I don't i'm not going to list every single thing but this is probably and again i'm working now more than ever to try to do to, to shift and pivot and do things but there also is a sense of like I might have an hour here or there that I normally didn't have before or make time before. Like you've been in the pool probably the most you've ever been in the se sure. almost seven years that we've lived there. Yeah. And it makes me so happy to see that you're enjoying the pool because for so many years you just didn't make time for it because no. you were so, you felt like you were needed to be productive or you were so exhausted by the time you got home. Yeah. Or, or I had, there were, or I had other opportunities I could yeah. work on and do and now it's kind of like, I, I've capped out the day, but like, you know, from 6 a.m. till 3 p.m. I'm like, well, my brain is just dumb and I'm over the shit and I can just go home and just kind of like, I don't get on my computer. I don't return messages. I just kind of unplug for a little bit, which again, that I'll take that as a positive instead of living in fear and being at home, like watching the news, like, oh shit, this is another day. Like I can't do that anymore. I'm or just, you can get creative and you and I have been able to do random day dates i guess i would say during the, or getaways even during the weekdays which to hike and paddleboard and just take advantage of you know the non-busy period of time uh that we won't get back <laughs> most likely not um and the last one uh which is real the financial stress uh you know, inability to pay bills you know the financial insecurity you know maybe not knowing what your work uh, you know, looks like now or in the future, what it's going to look like in three months or six months or a year. You know, that's a tough one for a lot of people. I don't have an answer for it. You know, my hope was on the back end, we learned to be, you know, responsible uh, with money. And for a lot of people, this is a shitty, tough way to, uh, to learn it for sure. Because again, I don't know, you know, I don't know how long this goes on and, and how many industries it affects and what the trickle down is and how you know, quick things come back or what they look like when it comes back. I don't, I don't have, I usually have an answer, but I don't know this one. Like I can't navigate it for anybody. And it would suck, man. Like it would suck to work for a big company and you know, they tell you to stay home and it would suck to, to run a business because I feel that too. So it's just a weird time for sure. And I couldn't imagine mm -hmm. like if I had, a, like, you know, if I was a normal person and I had a house payment, a car payment, a credit card and two kids, I wouldn't be able to breathe right now. I wouldn't even know how to operate. Like my brain would be so just stressed to the tilt. Yeah. So I feel for everybody, man, but it's real. 
you know, this is real. And again, when you add up all of these and if you, you know, have stress in six of the eight areas, it's probably tough to navigate the day. And so we're gonna talk through quick just how to, you know, hopefully alleviate some of these and probably the easiest ways that we do typically and, and hopefully it helps some of you guys if you're dealing with some. We already touched on some, but yeah, yeah. there's definitely some. The first one again, we've talked in the quick, exercise is the biggest thing and I'm a huge fan of movement in general. And I'm not talking about deadlifting and riding the assault bike, you don't have to do that. Walking, biking, swimming, yoga, just movement in general I think is good for you as a human. Playing with your kids, if you can play sport, basketball or something, hit a golf ball, anything that you can get lost in where it's like, wow, I had fun hitting golf balls for 45 minutes and all of a sudden it breezed by. Like those are the things where you really become fit and I think you get lost in play and we don't play enough as adults. So detach your mind from the shit and just do things that are fun for you. I think exercise is probably one of the biggest ones you guys can do like as a stress reliever for sure. How about you? I agree. What do you got on your list? You want me to go? Yep. I do think some of you guys, in terms of stress relief, the food you eat, it plays a huge part in it. And you're like, well, Jeremy, what does that mean? I'm like, and I understand like eating, you know, certain things makes you feel good in the moment, but it only digs the hole deeper. And again, I'm not saying like, on a Friday night, if you guys want to go have pizza and beer night, I'm all for that. But filling your body full of shit every single day is not going to do anything but make you more stressed and make you feel worse. And I think jack up your hormones as well. And I know it's tough at first, but changing your eating habits to being mostly real food and doing that over time, you are gonna feel better. And then obviously, you know, doing that with proper supplementation. So it's like I'm eating protein, produce, I'm drinking water. You know, if you're taking the athletic greens, if you're taking probiotics, if you're taking, you know, omega-3s, your fish oils, your krill oils, your chia seeds, the things that are gonna make you feel your best, I think that does mess with your brain and how your brain functions. And again, like when you look at your immune system and if you look at gut health and brain health and how closely all these things are connected if you're filling your gut full of shit your brain's going to function different it's just the reality of it sorry that's my rant next thing on the list we're talking maybe light some candles you light candles all the time yeah no lighting candles definitely creates a, a relaxing environment dude B, bj gadur it talks to me about lights so much he's like dude you can't be he talks i mean oh when we can be normal and i can be with him we'll do a podcast on this but he's like dude you gotta change the lights in your office you can't have these overhead for fluorescent lights he's like you have to have this he has i forget they're like these special lights he was talking about but he was super jacked but i do think the environment that you work in matters and that you live in and uh another soothing um, practice that you can do is using essential oils, which, you know, lavender, eucalyptus, um, CBD oils, things like that can really help with your stress anxiety, taking a, a nice bath, meditating, uh, like I said, yoga, deep breathing exercises, which I've been really enjoying, um, and making, it a point to do it throughout the day. Sometimes it's just like once a day, but once I, if I'm in a stressed state of mind, I stop, I get into child's pose and I just concentrate on deep breaths and listening to your breath. And for a long time, I would hear this and I'm like, mm, it's not gonna work for me, but I will tell you, it, it, it does work. And there's so much research and methods that can help reduce your stress levels just by activating that relaxation response by taking in deep breaths and inhale exhale so i highly recommend that you know and just going off that just really trying to get in a gratitude grateful state of mind and focusing on what you do have and what you don't have and what you can make the best out of your current situation so uh, meditating or prayer has been huge for me in that and i'm not perfect but majority of the time every day i try to set a, you know at least a couple minutes out of my day to to focus on that do you ever not do it i think there's been in the last year maybe a, a handful of days and you notice a difference i do i notice i start to crave it and i'm like i notice how i am my mindset is that day if i didn't do it and i'm like it's in a negative state and i don't like it so i gotta change it and not be lazy and make the time and effort no. to practice it. 
Dilo does it all the time too. Yeah. She stores that. And honestly, I think, again, I don't do it the way you do it, mm -hmm. but I have my own mindfulness. Even if you're in the car and you, you turn off the... You turn off the radio and turn you just, off the radio. Or you don't even have. I don't even that have radio in my car, car, son. It's like weird. I drive an 08 Accord and my but radio doesn't complete work. Complete silence or taking a walk mentally or a run is another kind of form of meditative state that you can. Well, I do think like your the environment of how like for me like I'll drive to work a certain way like if you're in Scottsdale, like I drive by the little uh, was it Chaparral Lake, mm -hmm. like the little lakes over there, and I just I, I don't again. I have no noise in my car, so I don't have a radio. But I pull the windows down, and it's like semi cool in the morning enough. Uh, where it's like I like the breeze. I put my hand out the window. As dumb as it sounds, I'm like it's calming, you know. Before I have to come in and like check emails and like deal with shit and do what I have to do, like it's just nice to have like there's no noise, nobody's talking to me, and I could just kind of just either zone out or just think about pleasant things and not mm -hmm. stressful stuff. So it, as crazy as it sounds, I do think those little moments are everything we look at it it's like well i have to have this crazy routine and a routine is amazing but it's the simplest stuff when you can have those you know that one minute of mindfulness like wow i like this cool breeze or the sun hits your face right. or whatever you need to do like to make you be relaxed like do those things more often mm -hmm. Next up. Uh, I was just going to go back to financial. If you're in a situation where you're like me, that you've been furloughed, you're kind of like the unknown, unsettled feeling because you're not quite sure what your company is going to be doing in the next couple months. If you have a job or you're going to have to interview for a new one, um, procrastination leads to stress. So my advice is get, and I need to actually be even better than I, I have been. But, you know, start using your network. Don't procrastinate. Use your relationships. Build relationships. Uh, use your online networks like LinkedIn. Um, anyone you're connected to and start putting the feelers out and um, start journaling, trying to figure out exactly, you know, what your plan is moving forward and what you want your next job opportunity career to look like. And it can be scary. I've been frustrated and overwhelmed thinking about, oh my gosh, am I going to have to switch industries? What does that look like? Um, but the more you can start planning and taking some action steps, the better you'll feel. You'll feel more prepared for interviews. You've done your research um, and you won't have as much negative effects on your health by, you know, this whole job loss situation or the unknown of your job stability. So that's huge. And um, should we talk about just financial planning, like making a budget? I mean, yeah, I think if you don't already. Communicating with your partner or just individually trying to create your own plan if you're not in a relationship. You're jumping like nine steps here. I know, sorry. The place. Uh, I'll say this really quick. One, I, it would suck if, if you did something for 10 years and you can't do it anymore. That sucks. I'm not going to downplay that at all. But this is a weird season of shit we're sitting in so i think the one thing you have to do is be proactive you can't wait around and be like oh is this person is this place going to hire me back am i going to have a job you can't wait around because if you do the odds are like you'll be left behind and there's going to be it's a very competitive environment so many applicants that will be going for jobs as more people and you have, have to, be, to make changes you have to be realistic about it i'm not saying settle for some shit but what I'm also saying is you don't gotta be fancy. This is not a time to like be overly prideful and say things. Now, I'm not gonna judge anybody for what you do, but if somebody said, Jeremy, what would you do? I'm like, I would go cut grass if I had to cut grass. If that's what I had to do in this season of life to make ends meet, to keep moving forward, I would. You can keep applying to other jobs and doing other things in the meantime. I go, but you can go out and work. And have and just have a backup plan. Yeah. A and side job. And nothing's permanent though. Like mm -hmm. I think people think like, oh, I did this for ten years, the next job has to pay me hundred K. It doesn't. Working at JSF has been my side job. <laughs> <laughs> And we're not paying part-time people here 100 k so it's, they're going to get what they get. But, but I have been contributing more, for sure. and that's helped me mentally. And well, I think, yeah, just so you're not at home, like, well, what the hell? Doing nothing, yeah. twiddling my thumbs, like, mm, what am I going to do today? What I'm saying is, I think, detach your mind from, like, if the next thing is not perfect and doesn't pay as much, it's at least moving the needle forward, and it's providing you money, and then you can decide on the opportunity what you want to do. And I think for some people... And not everybody. It sucks, man. If you liked what you did and it's not there anymore, 
I feel for you, but some people work in jobs that they hated. They mm -hmm. didn't like them anyway. And maybe this is in some roundabout, weird, backward ass way. In yes. That's exactly what we were talking about, my coworker and I, on the phone today. It, maybe this is what's going to force us to kind of take that next leap of faith into something else that we're passionate about or we can use, transfer our skills over into this new position or company. So think about it that way. And maybe it doesn't pay you 150k like your old job, and it pays you 47, but you're super happy. You're happy, and that's really what matters. And I've learned that um, more recently. I feel like than in the last couple of years, or even the last year. So. And it, it's tough because it's when you're in. It's hard to see the forest from the trees. I'll put it that way. In. Um, I've been through shit before, like everybody else. And it's like, it's weird. It's retroactive. It's easy for me to say. Like when you're in the worst of it, sometimes it ends up being one of the most positive things ever. Like because I didn't get certain jobs, I ended up being here, sitting here, mm -hmm. talking to you today, doing this. And if I would have got those jobs, there would be no Jeremy Scott Fitness. There wouldn't be the community and the culture. And I wouldn't have fell in love with this and went so far into it. You just don't know what the future holds. So, so you got to, and again, you can't control. You just got to try and... Just make the best of it. That's it. Uh, what's the next one? Well, we didn't really touch on social about like relationships. And I know in the Healthline article, um, now more than ever, you should be leaning on people that you trust, that you feel love from, your family, your friends. Having those strong social ties is so important during this time and any time in your life when you have stress, anxiety. But the, the people who really your key support you your core circle and um, and just going off of if you're in a relationship or even if you are single, but gosh, like a hug, a kiss, cuddling, sex. playing with your dog, sex. yeah, prioritizing sex um, can really help with releasing the, oxy um, the oxytocin. Releases a lot. And lowering <laughs> blood pressure. And it just, it gives you that mental boost that you need. And it feels with good. human connection, I just can't emphasize that enough. And, and it's something, I mean, it's challenging and you have to make being with, you know, your partner or be, you know, spending time with your family, your kids, that has to be so important now more than ever because that's the, the, the biggest takeaway is life without like feeling love and having people to experience and enjoy it with I mean, it's why else would you want to be on earth so if you don't have that yeah well so, and i think now more than ever like without the connection whether that be you know again if you're used to going to a gym or your co-workers or your softball league or the fun things you can't do you, you have to make an effort to connect the ways that you can and at least do it virtually if you can't do it in physically in person because it's weird man like mm -hmm. i said it the other day i'm like I was here like on Monday and it's like I hadn't I don't think I opened my mouth until like four o'clock and I'm like yeah like we can still make money and we can still do things but I'm like it's so weird to like just be so isolated in this yeah. thing with nothing else and so I do think it's vitally important and again the, the, the loneliest thing is when people are in a house with somebody and they still feel isolated because you're both living there but you're, yeah. you're like not really present so really focusing on Getting off your phones, stop mm -hmm. reading bullshit, and talk. I to like person. struggle with that sometimes. Instagram in bed is just—I uh, don't understand. Yeah, it. I, I refuse you know, for to a long do time it. I was doing really good, and then lately night, I've been you know, it's sucking Instagram. me in again. She's watching me on video in Instagram. Well, because I filmed the video and I wanted to see how I filmed just it, and to watch I, me but sometimes I'll watch it over and over, and I'm like, I get very anal about things. So. But not in bed, like you can watch it all night. I know. Like I get set your own parameters and your own boundaries of your times where like. Uh, we typically leave our phones, I put it in a different room. So when we can just be together, we're just together. Yeah, and but I've been doing that for, uh, like... You're way better, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, again, there's not like, what do I want to, like... I says they're like, what do I, I don't search anything. I don't go to news sites. I don't go to ESPN. There's no sports. I'm like, there's nothing for me to look at on the internet. Yeah. Like, there's no, there's nothing fun. But all you, what you will research is things that will help people and benefit you and I further to, your education yeah. like that's what you typically spend a lot of time for what will help you guys who are listening because i don't care about and, and honestly selfishly it helps me so uh but what what i can do to and again that keeps me busy and, and gives me a sense of like 
I'm, I still am useful in the world and I matter, even though I can't use one set of skills right now with people, like I can't physically train humans, but I can, we can make videos, we can write content, we can do the podcast that will help you guys. And so I feel good doing that. And so you guys can do the same thing, like ways to help me have fun, ways to help us not stress. Like the things that, again, it, sometimes it's as simple as that, just filling your head with positive shit. Yeah. Helps you feel less stress. Um, you want to go over direct things you do and I do, or do you want I to go over? I feel like I've been touching on mine. So, I mean, if it's for me, uh, to be honest, uh, I don't, again, like I said, you guys know, like for me to de-stress, I don't watch the news because it, it bothers me. Um, if, if something's important, I'm not going to be uneducated. I'll find out. Someone will tell me or I'll read something I need to read, but I'm not going to look at the same panic porn 14 times a day. I'm also not going to go on Facebook and scroll through comments or scroll through people posting the same bullshit all the time. I delete those people or snooze them. I don't look at anybody else's stuff because if it's not going to put me in a good mood, why do it? Like I literally would just look at puppies mm -hmm. and then this makes me feel good. So I'll, I'll type in things that, that put me in a good mood or Heather will share with me like you sent me the, the girls fuck, fuck them all post the other day. But Which she's is like a P fake prescription P drug. She calls it fuck em all, but it's like P-H-U, it's like guacamole, like U-O-C-M-A-L, yeah. M-O-L. But she's like, get yourself some fuck em all. And basically that was what her Oh my gosh, was. I was it, dying, amazing. crying, laughing. Like every day I like to watch her for my um, morning boost because it just lets you laugh, but it also just is like, you know what, I'm not going to care what other people are doing. I'm going to focus on myself, my own health happiness and not let the craziness get to me yeah. and just you know screw it but it's like it's it's reading those accounts or like you know shithead steve or like fuck jerry like those the, having the, some comedy to yes. watch um it makes you feel good to make light of the current situation is always helpful and that's the things i watch on tv and like for me it's but like you're really good with listening to like inspiring podcasts and books too yeah, I only I only want to listen to things that are going to lift me up. Like so, again, educational stuff. But like uh, I just got done listening to um, an audio book. Usually, when I'm walking or I'm driving up here, because I've been coming into the office for several months, because it gives me something to do, and I'm like, tell me what project I can work on. Yeah. But I just um, finished the book Untamed, and I highly recommend it for the females out there. Not for dudes. I mean, they could benefit from it to learn more about their woman. Yeah, I think, what am I on right now? Uh, I've been doing a lot of the Rogan's podcast, Ramsey's podcast. I've been doing uh, Automatic Habits, and it's James Clear. I listened to it once. This is the second time I listened yeah, to it. I need to listen to his. I follow him. It's a good book. Um, I don't know anything about it. Atomic Habits, right? Or... I think it's automatic, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'm like, maybe I'm like the third chapter again the second time. It's good, though. It's uh, useful stuff. But again, things that... Put me a good one, and again, I watch comedies, and I tend not to... I can't watch any depressing stuff. Although we've been watching that Unsolved Mysteries. Yeah. On Netflix. Like, for the take on the old one, I used to watch with my grandma. It's a good show. Yeah, it's really... It's good. The UFO one was weird, but... Yeah. Um, that helps. But I do think those are all things, again... Um, what else do we have? I hope you're just laughing. Like we just mentioned, yeah. Just... But the other day, I said that we shared some inappropriate jokes oh, here. Oh, yeah. We were being... Like he's high amazing. schoolers. He's amazing. And then Jeremy, like, I was like crying. I was crying. I laughing. thought he was going to wet himself because he was like crying, laughing so hard. Which I'm like, yeah. But I met like I rarely do and that. do something because I think he's losing his mind. <laughs> because there's like not that many funny moments, and like I just found it, and I was like, this is dying. I don't know why. We I wish I, share. I wish I could share on the podcast. I know, but, but it's just not right. Oh, it's a little bit. It's not. It's not good. It's a little bit deep. <laughs> um, also, other than that, man, I just think you have to do again. As dumb as it sounds, I just say, you know, do shit you love to do. Um, they do list cuddling on a list. I, mean, I said cuddling. I know, but I'm not like cuddle like with your puppy. Maybe not with your well, wife or husband. So rude, but, but like literally, our dog gets mad at us when we try to cuddle each other, like in bed or on the couch. She starts, she'll get in between us, she starts making noises, and she's like frustrated that we're not paying attention to her. It's really strange and annoying, but cute too, I guess. She's spoiled, 
But but she's always around watching us. <laughs> yeah. So if you're gonna have sex, like lock them out of the room. It's just creepy when they try to get up in that. You can hear them outside the door. I couldn't imagine having kids. It'd be just tough. It would be tough to like do your thing. But they do say here though, interacting with pets may help release oxytocin, a chemical that promotes positive it. mood in the brain. I said that too. When you pet her at night, I'm just like. There's it's so like, many articles I've read about that. It's like drugs. It literally can. It's one of my activate favorite things. The same hormones uh, or chemical release as holding like a newborn baby or touching your own baby and cuddling your baby. I'm addicted to it. Like you pet them like a million times. Yeah. And I want to bite them. Like I want to bite her ears. It's weird. I never thought I'd love an animal so much, but I do. It makes me feel good. So what I do is listen to music I like, watch shows I like, jump in my pool, uh, pet my dog. Follow inspiring people, listen to, and again, I think that, and read. Can I just say this for life? Like, you should have friends like that. Like, your friends should be like, again, I basically have two groups of friends. The ones that are just like fun to be around and the ones that make me better. And sometimes those people cross over and that's basically the only two groups of people that I really associate with. Like people that just like make me a better person, yeah. and I, like I look at them as like we are peers, and like we both we think the same way, we are mindful, we are inspiring, we are motivated, and then I have the friends who like we just. And again, I'm not saying my, my other friends can't be this, but like they just we just have fun. Mm -hmm. We just talk, we fuck around. It doesn't got to be serious. Like we can watch UFC fights or do whatever, and just bullshit, and talk about rap music and basketball and all the things that are like important to us but like they're not you know life altering things and like you have to have those people in your life have a good mix of people yes like when you're feeling a certain way you need a certain area like a boost of yeah fun then hang out with that person if you need someone to really talk to a good listener type of friend or a friend that you can have really heavy deep conversations on really important topics like you just I try to just do it have a good variety of friends but I think now more than ever or family members that you want to speak to um, now more than ever it's you really are realizing who you want in your life and who's yes. important to you and and it's okay if that means that your circle of friends might be smaller than it used to be but this kind of reveals everybody's I think true colors and how um, how important relationships are to people and well if you have stress if you're stressed out about calling somebody maybe you shouldn't call them you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. like during this anyway like if you know you're gonna have to make a phone call it's or gonna they're gonna make you feel a certain way then maybe whether they judge you maybe or... you just need to have a little break you know or yes. pick and choose when put them on the shelf for a minute it's a good time to talk but... otherwise just Really try to just surround your brain, make the environment you live in as free and as relaxing and as fun as possible and do that with everything you consume. And that goes for the food you eat and the people and everything that you're around. Just like put yourself in a position to be happy, I guess, and, and be less stressed, especially in a time when like everything seems to stress people out. Like just do what you can to. Happiness takes work and every day it's like a it can be challenging and it's like you just have to make the effort I know I do um, it just doesn't come easy on certain days or certain parts of the days because of whatever you're dealing with so you just have to find it in whatever way that makes sense to you 100% anything else? <laughs> <laughs> mic drop son um, I dig that Cool. That's all I got. <laughs> yeah. We'll pop on tomorrow. Either I will or we both will. We got a couple more. We have a marriage or a relationships one that we can do either tomorrow or next or over the weekend. Yeah. If we're still married, we'll do it. Yeah. If we're divorced, then <laughs> Wish guys, us luck. we'll get it. You know, it's day to day at this moment. Um, anything else you guys can hear on the podcast, obviously, you know, send a message, shoot a request, happy to record it for sure. If you find yourself on iTunes right now, stop. Don't be a lazy ass. Go to the podcast app on your iPhone. Scroll your finger all the way down. Drop a five star. Leave a couple comments. Would appreciate it. Same thing if you're on a MacBook or an iPad. Just range and reviews. Hook it up. Share it with a friend or family member you think it can help. Um, and thank you guys. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching on YouTube. Thank you. Um, 
So yeah, we'll be back tomorrow and probably the next day as well. So if you need something, just shoot over a DM or email and it'll get to it. So until next time, eat well, train hard, be nice to people. And please, you guys, keep doing shit you love with people you enjoy because your life is too short not to. We'll talk to you soon. Peace.